Hey everyone, this is May Park. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to create this cool galaxy background using Altenew Watercolor 36 Pen Set and make a birthday card using Simon Says Stamp Ornate Ornament Stamp Set. This card is not my go-to style, but I just wanted to go outside of my comfort zone and try something messy and fantastic. Besides the supplies I will use, I didn't plan out my entire card design in advance. So you will see I'm making the card with a flow and making some mistakes and changes along the way. As usual, I share the behind the scenes video at the end to show you my messy desk after my project is done. Because I know you love seeing my craft space. So make sure to watch this video until the end. These are some of the new stamps and dies from Simon Says Stamp, Stamp Tambo release. I thought the combination of these two stamp sets would work for a birthday card for my friend who celebrates her birthday in December. I could easily make a one layer card with a custom background by stamping the images repeatedly and color them with alcohol markers. But I really wanted to create a galaxy background using watercolors to bring attention to my ornaments. Since I will creating a background with watercolors, I pulled out my favorite watercolor paper, which is Artist Cold Press Watercolor Paper. I already cut out my paper rather than A to card size and drew some guideline with a pencil so I know where I should stamp. I placed my watercolor paper inside the original Misty stamping tool. Then I'm pulling out my ornament stamps and moving them around to find a perfect placement. I'm using the sentiment stamp from the birthday border stamp set to reserve some room for stamping my sentiment later. I'm going to prep my watercolor paper with anti-static powder bag to prevent any stray powder from sticking to unwanted areas while hidden bossing. When I'm inking up my stamps with Simon Stamp Clear Ink, and stamp them a few times on the paper. Since I'm stamping on the watercolor paper, it's hard to get clean embossed images because of the texture on the watercolor paper. So I'm making sure that I transfer my images well on the paper by pressing the misty door hard with even pressure. While the ink is still wet, I'm going to sprinkle some alternate pure white embossing powder over the images and tap the excess powder off my paper. Then I heat set my ornaments with heat tool until they are completely melted. I'm going to make my background dark while keeping my ornaments bright and colorful. So I was going to mask off my ornaments with the Mortal Masking Liquid. I've never used this masking liquid before, so it's pretty new. But the liquid didn't come out for some reason. So I decided to use other masking tool. This time I'm using fine line masking fluid. I'm applying it over my embossed image with my paintbrush. But I'm having trouble to make an even coat over the image. I should have checked how to use this masking fluid before I started filming a video. My couple of attempts with the masking fluid didn't turn out successfully. Even though it's embarrassing to share my mistakes with you guys, I didn't want to take off the video clip as I thought you could also learn from my mistakes. Anyway, I felt so helpless. So I'm starting over here. This time, I'm going to create my background first. I already taped down my a 2 size watercolor paper on the chipboard seat using washi tape. This will help prevent my paper from warping while watercoloring. I'm going to wet my entire paper with clean water and size 16 watercolor paintbrush. It's important that you saturate your paper first with lots of water before applying your watercolor paints because water helps the colors move around and blend them together. Today I'm using Altenew Watercolor 36 pen set but you could use any watercolors you may already have. I'm going to mix my paint with clean water on my alternate watercolor palette and load my brush with an industrial diamond. 
Then I'm going to apply the pigment on random areas of my watercolor paper. I'm also going to bring different shades of gray on my background. Then I'll be applying another colors, Desert Night and Lavender Fields. When you create this type of messy background, it's good to use a large size paintbrush so your paintbrush can hold lots of water. It helps the paints blend well together without leaving any harsh lines. Once my first layer is done, I'm going to dry my watercolor paper with a heat tool to speed up the drying time. Make sure to keep the distance between your paper and heat tool and dry your paper slowly. Otherwise, the wind from your heat tool will move your paints and create weird lines on your background. I'm going to repeat the process and keep adding more colors to create a contoured messy background until I'm happy with it. I mainly use the color blue, gray, and purple. But you could go further and creative with your galaxy background by adding some bright colors like red and orange. If you apply too much pigment on the paper, you could pick up some of the excess color using a paper towel or use a wet paint brush to move the colors around. Once my paper is completely dry, I'm going to peel off the washi tape and remove my watercolor paper from the chipboard. I'm going to cut down my watercolor panel slightly smaller than A2 size using Timur's paper trimmer. Next, I'm going to mount my watercolor panel on the A2 size top folding white card base using double-sided tape. You could use glue tape if you want, but strong adhesive like this double-sided tape helps your watercolor paper flat and sturdy. To complete my galaxy background, I'm going to add some splatters using alternate ink sprays, pure white and anti-gold. I'm also mixing perfect pearl powder with white ink spray to add some shimmer to my background. Then I'm going to set my panel aside for about 10 minutes to air dry and move on to the next step. I'll be using my original misty stamping tool today so I can stamp a few images at once. If you don't have this tool, you could use a regular acrylic block or any other stamping positioners. I'm going to position my ornament stamps on my watercolor paper. Then I'm inking up my stamps with a Simon Says Stamp Clear Ink and stamp them on the paper. I'm going to stamp the images one more time with embossing ink to make sure I get a good impression. You could stamp your images with waterproof black ink if you want your images to have intense outlines. Or you could stamp the images with Timur's Distress Ink Antique Linen for no line watercoloring. But this time, I'll be heat embossing my images with gold embossing powder to get more festive look of my watercolor images in the end. While the ink is still wet, I'm going to sprinkle some wild gold embossing powder over the stamped images and tap the excess powder off my paper. You could use some clear embossing powder or white embossing powder if you want. And I'll heat stamp my images with my heat tool until they are completely melted. Please be careful not to touch the embossed images until they are cool. Otherwise, you will smudge your embossed images. Again, I'm going to use Alto New Watercolor 36 pen set to color my images using wet on wet technique. I'm going to pick up some pigment with my wet paint brush and I'm applying the color for the base layer. I'm making sure my paper is evenly saturated with water. Then I'll be bringing more colors to my images to add some contrast before the previous layer is dry. I'll be coloring the rest of my images using the same technique as I don't want to have too detailed images. I didn't like how my watercoloring turned out so I'm going to start it over. This time, I heat embossed my images using Alto New Antique Gold Embossing Powder and I'm going to color my images carefully, trying not to go outside the embossed lines. Since the space in the images are too small, I'm not going to worry about adding shading on the images that much. As long as the paper is still wet, you can make corrections if something goes wrong. Just blot your brush thoroughly and lift the paint back off the paper. In some cases, you may need to add clean water to the surface before lifting. 
or you can use a paper towel to wipe off the color. Once my coloring is done, I'm going to wipe off the watercolor paints on my watercolor palette using a paper towel and baby wipe. Next, I'm going to pull out the coordinating dies from the ornate ornaments die set. I'm placing the dies of the colored images and secure them on the paper using washi tape so they won't move while die cutting. After placing my paper and dies between cutting plates, I'll be running them through my Altenew Mini Blossom Die Cut Machine. Then I'm going to tie a knot through the hole using a gold metallic thread to go with gold hidden bust images. Now it's time to open my sentiment. Here is a plastic container full of my sentiment leftovers. I'm just pulling out some of the sentiment banners from the container and place them over my card front to decide types of font, size, and color of my sentiment. I think I like the gold heat embossed sentiment with clean and simple font on white cardstock. I'm going to pull out the sentiment from Simon Says Stamp First Day Border Stamp Set. I'm prepping a piece of white cardstock with anti stick powder bag to prevent any stray powder from sticking to unwanted areas. I'm going to ink my sentiment stamp with Simon Says Stamp Clear Ink and stamp it on the paper. While the ink is still wet, I'm going to sprinkle some alternate antique gold embossing powder of the sentiment and tap the excess powder off my paper. Then I heat set my sentiment with the heat tool until it's completely melted. Next, I'm going to trim my sentiment into a thin banner using a craft knife and ruler. Now it's time to assemble my card. I'll be mounting my ornament die cuts on my card front using trim from tape to give some dimension. I was going to attach the end of my gold metallic thread on the back of my card to make it to look like the ornament was hanging from above. Then I changed my mind and decided to make a bow with a gold metallic thread to give some detail. I'm trimming both sides of my sentiment banner in a fish tail shape and mounting it below the ornaments. I'm using my TSQ ruler to place my sentiment banner in straight. The color of my white splatters was changed to pink due to the dark color on the background. So I'm adding white dots using a signal gel pen to add some brightness. I've run this galaxy background technique from my friend Yana Smuckler last year at a craft retreat. This is my second time making a card with a galaxy background and I really love how my background turned out. If you haven't done it yet, I strongly recommend you give it a try. This is it for today. This video is part of Simon Says Stamp Stamp Temple release party. To celebrate this release, I'm giving away a prize pack valued at over $150 including new and old stamps dice, and more from Simon Says Tem and other companies. Be sure to check out my blog for more details and leave a comment on my blog post for a chance to win. If you enjoyed my video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And I'd love it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any new videos from me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time with another video. Bye bye!